Welcome back to our classes. Today we are going to study on the topic of faith. Faith. I want us to know that faith is not all that we are going to learn here. What we are going to learn here is just a tip for you. Most of the work, you will do it for yourself. You need to go and study more on faith. Hello. Yes. Now, in this course, we, we, we are going to have five classes. The first class is the introduction to faith. Then a Bible study about faith. We will continue in class two on the Bible study on faith. Then in class three, we will look at the what, why, where, when, how, and who of faith. And all of this we are going to expound it through reading of several verses in the Bible that speak on faith. Then on class four, we are going to study on faith, how it relates to salvation and sanctification. And then we'll continue on the same in class five as we conclude and then we do the conclusion to our study of faith and finally as usual there is an exam there is an exam so we go straight to the introduction introduction and as we begin i would like us to note that Faith is the currency of buying the things that are in heaven. If you need anything from God, you only receive it by faith. Because there are things that we don't know, we don't see, but we believe. When you believe, the Bible says that when you believe that you have it and you trust it, then you will have it. So there is the introduction to faith and we have an author's illustration. And the author is saying here that a man was climbing a mountain and he fell. He grabbed a branch, he desperately hung onto the branch and yelled for help. And you can hear the conversation that was going there. The man was saying or was asking, is there somebody up there? And the voice came from up and said, yes, I am here. The man asked, who is it? And the voice said, it is the Lord. Then the man said, help me, Lord. And the Lord asked him, do you trust me? Then the man said, yes, Lord, I trust you completely. Then the voice says, very good. Now, let go of the branch. The man asked, what? And the voice continued to say it again, I said, let go of the branch. After a long pause, the man said, Is there anybody else up there? Because according to him, he was expecting that God or the voice that were up there would come and rescue him from the pit that he was in. Or he would come and catch him or hold him and take him to a safe ground. But now, the Lord is telling him, Let go of the branch. And this is what is happening to most of us most of the time. At times, we are trusting God partly because we want to see Him in action. We want Him to come into our situation and rescue us completely. But at times, God is telling us to let go. Maybe when He's telling you to let go, maybe He had prepared somewhere where He could not dash His feet. Come on, begin a Lakini, because the expectation of this man was different from according to him of who the Lord was, he could not let go. And mind you, the story continued to that. It's only that it has not been finished. It continued that at the end of the time or the end of the day, the man got tired and his the, the ant slipped off from the branch and he fell down. And where he fell, there were branches that were there, the easy majani, and he fell on the leaves that were there and he was not hurt. Then the voice told him, I told you earlier to let go. Now you have taken a lot of time, you, have, you wasted your energy only to let go at the last time when you have no more strength. So let's look at the reality of faith. 
One, it is difficult to have faith sometimes. The implication of faith is that we will note that everything under our control. Faith implies that we do not understand everything and that we are not able to do everything. If, you control, if we could control, understand and do all things, then we will not need faith. If we have power to do all that we need within ourselves, then we do not need faith. But you find that faith comes through to our inadequacy. Mahali ambapo hatuwezi, mahali tumekuwa, mahali tumelemewa, imani inaingia pale. Lakini wakati tuko na uwezo wa kufanya kila kitu, wakati huu hatuitaji imani. Ndio unaona ya kwamba mtu ambaye ako na kila kitu ni vigumu ku trust kwa sababu yeye anahitaji imani ako nazo. Mtu ambaye hana anahitaji imani ya kuamini ya kwamba atakuwa nazo ama ako nazo. However, it is not like that. We do not need faith. Yet sometimes the way of faith does not seem like the best way. It may even seem like a crazy way. The life of faith is not simple, but life without faith is impossible. And there is a need for faith. Therefore we need to study the topic of faith. We need to understand it and its implication and most importantly, we need to be challenged to live the life of faith. When Jesus said that it is impossible for it would, could be impossible for a rich man to enter into heaven than a camel to enter into the middle eye. Actually here he was saying that when somebody has everything that they need, they feel that they know they don't need faith because whatever they need, they go into their reach. So we need to know that we need to be challenged that ata wakati tunona ni kama tukona nguvu bado tukue tu watu wa kumtarajia mungu watu wa imani let's look at the bible study about faith and part a we are going to look at the nature of faith and we want to see what are the natures of faith Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 waifeso Waifeso, kifungu cha pili, mustari wa nane. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of of God. So here we see the nature of faith that faith is a gift of God. It is a gift. A gift is what you do not deserve. A gift is what you are given. So we all need to have this gift called faith so that we may be able to use faith effectively because we will not or we cannot please God without faith because faith is a gift. Faith, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Galatians 5, 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. So faith is a fruit of the spirit. Faith is a gift. Faith is a spirit. Is a spirit. Is just a fruit. First Corinthians chapter twelve and verse nine. First Corinthians twelve nine. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirit. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. And yet to another, the interpretation of tongues. So faith, here we are seeing in the book of Galatians that faith is a gift. 
of the Spirit, as we saw in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, that faith is a gift of the Spirit. John chapter 6, verse 29. John 6, 2, 9. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent to me. So here, faith is being described as the work of God. Faith is the work of God. Faith nikazi ya mungu. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10. Faith comes from the heart. Faith comes from from the heart. Romans 6, Romans 10, verse 9. Romans 10, verse 9 and 10. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So here we see that faith comes from the heart. And Hebrews chapter number 11 verse 1 is the description of faith. Faith believes today what is hoped for tomorrow. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, if, Paul said that faith is the substance of things hoped for, things not seen. So here, faith believes today what is hoped for tomorrow. And let's describe or look at the description of faith. John 11, John 11, 39, John 11, 39. Jesus said, Take you away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said unto him, Lord, this time he stinks, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, I said, said I not unto you that if you would believe, you shall see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard him. You've, you, you have heard me, and I know that you hear me always. But because of the people which stand by, by I said it, that they may believe that you have sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus! Come forth, and he who was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Lose him, and let him go. So here, the description of faith is that faith, we are seeing faith without limit. Faith without limit. Jesus told them, that only if you believe on him. So it has no boundaries, it has no limits. You need to have a faith without limits. James chapter 2, verse 22, we are looking, we see perfect faith. Perfect faith. James chapter 2 and verse 22. Sin sees you how faith wrought his works, and by works was faith made perfect. So here we are seeing there is a perfect faith, there is a great faith in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 10. There is the precious faith in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 1. There is holy faith in Jude chapter number 20. There is humble faith in Luke chapter 7 verse 6 and 7. And we also have little faith. 
when Jesus said in Matthew 8, 26 and, 7, and 17, verse 20, that if you will have faith just as little as a mustard seed, so there is little faith. We actually don't need to have a great faith. You can only have a small faith and do great works because he said that if you only have a little faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be you removed yonder and the mountain shall be removed. So, and at times Jesus was telling his disciples, you of little faith. So, we have little faith, we have sincere faith in First Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. We have common faith in Titus chapter 1 verse 4. We have mutual faith, Romans chapter 1 verse 12. This is where we come in agreement together as uh, believers and we trust on something. We have united faith, Mark chapter 2 and verse 5. And we have, we, and faith involves risk, Matthew 14 verse 28 and 29. When you, you believe on something and you don't see it and you trust that you, it is there or it has happened, that is the faith that you risk. You risk your, you are all you expecting for a miracle that you don't, you are not sure, you have not seen it, but you are trusting that it will come. And let's look of types of faith. We have faith for salvation, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, when Jesus said, when Paul said that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you shall be saved. So faith for salvation. We have temporary faith, Luke chapter 8, verse 13. And we have intellectual faith in James chapter 2, verse 9. And there is dead faith, James chapter 2, verse 17 and 20. When James said that faith without works is dead. So when we put faith also and we are not doing anything on it, we are just seated down and we are, we, we are sitting and we are expecting something. James said that without works it's dead and the objects of faith the objects of faith where we place our faith upon where we put our faith in so we need to put our faith in god john chapter 14 verse 1 faith in christ john chapter 20 verse 31 you remember jesus saying that believe in god and believe also in me there is faith in the writings of moses john chapter 5 verse 46. There are those people who lived long before Christ came and their faith was mostly based on the on Moses and the commandments that Moses had given. And those people who died during that time, during their times of judgment, they will be judged according or they were to be judged or they will be judged according to the works of, Mo, of Moses. So they need to put their faith in Moses. So their faith in the writings of Moses. We have faith in the writings of the prophet, Acts chapter 26 and 27. We are also, the object of faith is also faith in the gospel, Mark chapter 1 and verse 15. Faith in the promises of God, Romans chapter 4 and verse 21. Let's look at the sources, sources of faith. Where does our faith come from? John chapter 20 and verse 30 and 31. Let's turn to John 20. John 20, verse 20 and 30. chapter 20 verse 30 and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ the son of God and that believing you might have life through his name so here there is faith from the Bible, faith from preaching, John 17 and verse 20, and faith from the gospel, Acts chapter 15 and verse 7. 
So in June, this is where a, a question was asked that how would we believe if nobody pre would preach to them? So there has to be someone to preach faith so that people may get that faith. What are the uses of faith in the Christian life? Romans chapter 1 verse 17, to live by faith. A Christian is supposed to live by faith. In Matthew chapter 21 verse 22, he is also using faith to pray. That means that faith is accompanied by prayer. Faith is a weapon. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 8 and First Timothy chapter 1 verse 18, verse 19, chapter 6 verse 12 and Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 22. Here is when we are, even when we are putting on the full armor, we are putting on the full armor of faith through prayer to resist the evil. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16. When you resist the devil, he will flee from you. You resist him through faith. We also use faith to overcome the world. First John chapter 2 verse 13 to 17 and chapter 5 verse 4. And even to die in faith. Hebrews chapter number 11 and verse 13. And the results of faith is forgiveness of sins. Acts chapter 10 verse 43. Justification. Acts chapter 13 and verse 39. We said last time justification is to be accounted just for what you have done. You have done a lot of wrongs, but then you are acquitted and accounted just. It is what you do not deserve, but you receive through faith. Freedom from judgment, John chapter 3, verse 18. Once we receive Christ, once we become people of faith, we are no longer under the bondage of judgment. So we get freedom from spiritual death. We also, another result is that it results to salvation, Mark 16 and verse 16, and it also brings on eternal life, spiritual life, spiritual life and sanctification. And we said sanctification is the washing of our sins by the blood of Jesus. It is not our work, but the work of the cross. Faith also results into adoption. John chapter 1 verse 12. We are adopted into Christ. We, faith also brings access to God. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 2. The another result of faith is inheritance. We become coheres. We peace. We receive also peace and rest. And there is success. What are the spiritual commands about faith? To be firm in faith. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 13 and Colossians chapter 1 and verse 23. You need to stand your ground on faith. To continue in faith. Acts 14 22 and 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 9. Remember when we were talking about redemption and salvation, we said there is that we call sanctification. And we say that sanctification is a process from the time someone receives Christ all the way on from the time somebody is being saved all the way up to the time when they will be taken back or when they will go or when Christ, Christ will come a second time or when they will be raptured or when they will go to meet with Christ. So that process is the process we call the sanctification and we need to continue in faith up to that particular moment, to be strong in faith, to abound in faith, and to pray for more faith. Luke 17 and verse 5. There is a time that we need to pray that God may increase our faith. What are the importance of faith? Everything else apart from faith is seen. Romans 14 and verse 23. If you do anything else and there is no faith in you, then you are still a sinner. Everything else apart from faith is sin. Faith is the only way to please God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, the Bible says that it is impossible to please God without faith. Faith has meaning. Galatians chapter 5 verse 6, and faith is essential for praying in James chapter 1 verse 6. Remember James was speaking and he said that we need to pray in faith. And there are also obstacles for, to faith. And I want us to look at these obstacles in the book of, book of Matthew chapter 15. Matthew 15 and verse 23. 
Matthew 15, verse 23. Matthew 15. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crunch of the crumbs which fell from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it unto you even as you will. And her daughter was made whole well from that very hour. So at times you need to risk for faith to work in you. Faith at times you become like a fool. You risk all that you have to receive. Like this woman, she risked, she, she agreed, Jesus called her literally a dog. When he said that it is not good to give the food that is for the children to the dogs. And she said, she didn't argue and say that you have called me a dog. She only said that even dogs eat of the branches that fell. And Jesus said, truth and your faith, great is your faith. Let it be done unto you according to what you have asked. In Luke chapter 5 and verse 18 and 19. And behold, men brought in a bed, brought in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy. And they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the house top and let him down through the tilting, through the tilting with his coach into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, your sins are forgiven you. So we see that at times, there could be people who are obstacles to faith. Kuna wakati kuna watu wanaweza zuia, wanakuwa obstacle. Ama kuna vitu ambazo vizuizi zineza kuzuia kusifikia ile imani. Unaweza songwa na mambo mengi. Hizo ni obstacles. Mark chapter 5 and verse 35. Mark 5, 3, 5. When he yet spoke, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house a certain which said, Your daughter is dead. Why troubles you the master any further? So there was an obstacle here which is dead. Death. Lakini kwa sababu hiyo alikuwa na imani, hiyo imani tu ilifanya kazi. And Faith also undergoes some tests. Tests of faith. John chapter number 11, verse 3 to 6, is that faith may experience delay. You might pray, and instead of it happening immediately, it takes time. So it only depends on your patience. There are also requirements that are difficult to understand. John chapter 6 verse 3, Jude chapter 7 verse 7, 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 9, and 13, 2 Kings chapter 3 verse 16, and chapter 4 verse 3. So, you need to understand faith. Faith is a requirement that people need to understand it in order to work. There is a, a great like, a preacher who said, he's called George Mueller, said, God wants to increase the faith of his children. However, many times his people do not want more faith because there is a great price to pay. In order for faith to work, 
there is a great price to pay. There are tests and trials before the victory, and there are delays before the end. We need to be willing to receive them from the hand of God. It is God's way of increasing our faith. This is the experience of the life of faith. That is trials, obstacles, difficulties, and the times defeats. God uses all of them as the food of faith. So it is not that you pray and when something don't when nothing happens, you give up and you say that God does not answer. No, at times you may find difficulties, you may find obstacles, at times you may you you may find you may experience some trials through that faith, but it does not mean that God is not working. He is still working, but on that particular moment he is increasing our faith. So let's look at the why, the what, the where, the when, the how, and who of faith. What is faith? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. The Bible says now faith is the assurance. Assurance was interpreted from the Greek word upostasis. Upostasis. The meaning of upostasis is substance, essence, foundation, guarantee, right of property. Is the assurance. Assurance is what you are sure of when you receive, when you, you use faith. You are assured or you assure yourself that this, that is going to happen. You know, there are so many words in Greek. You may find that one word means so many things. So you can imagine what the word upostasis means. It means substance, something that is tangible. Essence, it means a foundation of, of something. It means that is something that is a guarantee. What you are sure of, it's a right of property. It's what you are sure that when you talk of faith, you are sure that you have something with you. Faith is your guaranteed right of property, like property did with respect to your place in eternity. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18. We, we, we believe that we have received Christ and therefore our rightful place is in heaven. That is faith. We are sure of it. Faith is the belief in God without questions. Hebrews chapter number 11 verse 6. It says that it is impossible to please God without faith. So it is the belief in God, you are sure there is a God without question. Faith is to know and believe the truth in, in Romans chapter 8 verse 28. Yet faith understands that the process may not be perfect. It is to know the truth, but also it is to understand that the process may not be perfect. This means at times the process may include things that are not good, however the end results will be good. Kuna wakati unaamini vitu na unaona kwamba hata hiyo process inatumia si nzuri lakini unaamini tu na pale mwishowe unakuja kukuta ya kwamba matokeo yanakuwa mazuri. Faith is oriented towards the future but the action of faith is in the present. Ni kitu ambacho uko nayo leo umeanza leo lakini matumaini yako ni maisha ya hapo au usoni maisha ya baadaye unapoanza imani ni mambo ambayo yatakuwa ni mambo ambayo unaamini ya kwamba itatendeka ni mambo unaamini ya kwamba itafanyika hauna saa hii saa hii watu wanakuona ukiwa duri lakini kwa sababu ya imani unaweka imani ya kwamba one day things will be better and sure things shall be better faith must come from the commandment of god it must be based on obedience Faith that is not based on the commandment of God is presumption. Imani lazima ikue imetiwa misingi katika amri ya Mungu. Ni lazima ikue katika kutii ama katika utiifu wa Mungu. Imani ambayo haiko katika utiifu wa Mungu ni imani potovu, ni imani batili, ni kile ambacho haitafanya kazi, ni kitu tu ambayo watu tu wana wanabahatisha. Faith has two sides. One side has to do with the intellect. The other side has to do with the will. So, imani 
ni lazima kwanza iko na sehemu mbili sehemu ya kwanza inakuja katika ufahamu ni lazima kuwe na ufahamu ndio ile sehemu ya pili nayo ikuwe katika ile hali ya kutamani ya kutaka kufanya ya the will the will is that you want to do you you you, you are not forced to to do it and what we have said the intellect is that intellectual certainty that Jesus is God you are sure with your mind body and soul that Jesus is God and the will is that you surrender of the will to Jesus as Lord <coughs> and that's why when you read John chapter 20 verse 28 you find that there is that word my God my Lord Faith is the combination of confidence and hope because faith is the combination of the present and the future. Ni ile mchanganyiko ya 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 ujasiri na tumaini. You are sure, you have that confidence and you have the hope that it will happen. Confidence is in the present, hope is in the future. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. You see, it is the assurance of things hoped for. Assurance is the present, the confidence. And things hoped for is the future, the hope. Which we have said is the combination, that faith is the combination of confidence and hope. Through faith, the following things happen. The mind, the mind trusts in God. The heart responds to the love of God. The will submits the commands of God and the spirit obeys in the service of God. Faith is a paradox. It goes beyond reason. Faith believes without understanding. Why? It does not ask that question why. You just believe without understanding, without any question, like a child. A child fails. A child may fall from a Anesa panda mbali mbaju kama hapa na anajiatilia mzazi akiwa hapo na anaamini ya kwamba hata anguka kwa sababu mzazi yako karibu na akiambuka bahati mbaya mbele ya mzazi mzazi siku nyingine hata wewe yaamini mzazi so yeye anaamini tu hata unachukua mtoto hivi unamrushia juu na unamwachilia anacheka juu ya hewa na unamshika tena anaamini tu mzazi atamshika Imagine that simple faith ya mtoto tu ndio ile imani ambayo tunataka tukue nayo kwa Mungu ya kwamba tunaamini tu ya kwamba kama hiyo story tumepatiwa ya huyo mtu ambaye aliyanguka Mungu alimwambia tujiachilie So imani ni ni paradox it goes beyond our reason haiulizi swali kwa nini haiulizi Faith thinks when in the jail Acts 16:25 Kiangalia pale Paulo na Sila wakiwa gerezani wao wanaendelea tu kuimba yani imani inaimba hata hata ndani ya jela haina kizuizi haizuiwi na chochote faith rejoices in the, in tribulation Romans chapter 5 verse 3 mtu akiwa wa imani hata akiwa katika mateso bado tu anaimba bado tu anafurahikia kwa sababu anajua si yeye ni Mungu faith chooses to endure mistreatment Hebrews 11:25 Hata wakati unatumiwa vibaya wakati unakuwa mistreated bado imani inavumilia pale inavumilia Faith accepts all things as the will of God Philippians 1 verse 12 Imani inaamini mambo yote kama mapenzi ya Mungu hata chochote kikutendekea mtu wa imani anasema tu kwamba haya yote ni kwa sababu mimi ni mtu wa Mungu na mimi ni mtu wa imani sitakufa tumaini Faith is a perception it is to perceive as reality that which is not revealed to the senses. The conviction of things not seen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 and 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18. It's a conviction. It's a perception. It is to perceive as a reality that which is not revealed to the senses. We have the five common senses. But faith goes beyond the common senses. Imani inakwambia kwamba ni kweli yeye yuko katika senses yote lakini kile ninajua ni kwamba I will nitafaulu I will make it 
Sin is the opposite of faith. When you lack faith, the opposite of it is that you are a sinner. In Romans chapter 14, verse 23, we have faith on one side, the other side is sin. Natural faith is natural according to the plan of God in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. And the result is life, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Now, on the other, the opposite of faith is sin, which we also find in the Romans 14, verse 23, that it's not natural according to the plan of God, Romans chapter 1, verse 26. And the result is death. When we don't believe in Christ, our, the results of it thereof is death. Death. Romans 23 says that for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And, and Romans 6.23, that is Romans 3, 23, 26, 623, it talks of that the results of it is death. So when we don't have faith in God, when we don't trust in Him, we find ourselves sinning. Because we will not accept when we are not in Christ, we don't accept that Christ came and died for our sins, and that we are forgiven of sins. Why is faith important to every person and to every Christian? The Christian life is a life of spiritual war. It is a life of spiritual conflict. Therefore, all of the spiritual armor of God is essential. Nevertheless, faith is of critical importance in addition to all, taking up the shield of faith, Ephesians 6, verse 16. After Paul has told us from verse, verse 11 that put on the whole armor of God and the talk of the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the buckle of truth, he talks of the food, the, the, the shoes of the preparedness for the gospel and the, the, helmet, the shield of faith and he also talks of the sword. Then he said, in all this, above all, in addition to all, taking up the shield of faith. Salvation is impossible without faith. John 3, 36. Victory over the world is impossible without faith. First John chapter 5, verse 3, verse 4. If you want to defeat the world, you defeat it through faith. It is impossible to please God without faith. Hebrews 11, 6. It is impossible to pray without faith. James chapter 1 and verse 6. And it is impossible to have Peace with God without faith. Romans 5 verse 1. It is impossible to have joy without faith. Justification is by faith. And we live by faith. Our righteousness comes by faith. And Christ lives in us by faith. We receive the Holy Spirit by faith. And whatever is not faith is sin. Whatever is not faith is sin. Where does our faith come from? Where does our faith come from? Our faith is in God. It is not in a concept. It's not a cause. Faith is not a movement. Faith is an experience. Or a human. Our faith is in God. John 11, 26, Galatians 2, 16, and Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. It is not a movement, it is not a human being, it's not an experience, it's not a cause. Faith, our faith is in God. It is supposed to come from God and to be grounded in God, to be anchored in God. We also receive the objects of faith listed in section 2 of this course. When should, we, should faith occur? When should faith occur? We need to have faith always. And in all things, consider the implications of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, and Romans 14, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, the Bible says that, put on, he said that, lean not on your own understanding, but trusting upon the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and body. So, Martha. If you look in the book of John chapter 11, verse 21-26, we see three types of faith found there. 
These types of faith are limited faith, foundational faith, and unlimited faith. Martha had limited faith. John 11, 21. Remember what Martha told Jesus. If you had been here, my, my brother could not have died. Your friend could not have died. Martha's faith ended when Lazarus died. She had faith that Jesus could heal Lazarus. But she did not have faith that Jesus would raise him from the dead. This shows that faith with limits can limit the power of God. Faith with limits is controlled by circumstances and faith with limits is motivated by the fear of failure. We always fear to fail. You fear to do things because you are prayed and prayed and nothing has happened so you have been limited and now you are afraid. You are afraid of being a failure. Mother Hold also had foundational faith, John 11, 23, 27. She stated her intellectual knowledge of Christ, but this intellectual position resulted in faith that had limits. As a result of this limited faith, Jesus wept. Intellectual knowledge of Christ is very important, but it is not sufficient. This is when we know that some things can happen when Christ is there. But just knowing that and you don't anchor your faith in him is not enough. Faith must go beyond intellectual knowledge of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. beyond. <clears throat> Mother later shows unlimited faith in John chapter 11 verse 39 to 44. At last, Martha permitted Jesus to remove the rock. She had faith without limits. The world says to see it is to believe it. Faith says to believe it is to see it. Faith comes before sight. You see what you have already, you believe and you see it. And like the one of the world, they need to see first, then they believe. Like, remember, Judas Iscariot, he said, I do not believe until I see and touch. But when we have faith, you are seeing it with the eyes of faith. Faith must be based on obedience. This means first, faith must be based on the word of God. As Peter did not walk on the water, he walked on the word of God in verse 29 of Matthew chapter 14. Jesus tells Peter to come. Faith is different than presumption. Faith is different than presumption. I want us to... When we put condition, when we... There is a diagram here. And this diagram has been divided into three parts. The first part is the condition, the second is basis, and the response. So faith, when we have the condition as faith, faith in the condition, the basis is revelation from God, then it results in obedience. When our faith is presumptions, we always look at the examples of someone else, someone who tried and failed, and this response is that it brings imitation. We will learn to imitate what others were doing. Thus, we do not say, now I will walk on water. I will have the faith of Peter. We must receive our own revelation from God. Nobody can walk in the faith of another person. Praise be to God. Here, we don't walk on faith of somebody else because somebody believed in this and it happened, you want to do the same. No, we need to go beyond that and to have our revelation from faith that God will reveal to us. Our faith must be connected directly to our personal relationship with God. However, we also must remember that there are many commands in the Bible that are applicable to all Christians at all times. There are those commands that are universal, the principle, 
But then there is that revelation that comes from our intimate relationship with Christ. The more we walk with him, the more we gain faith, the more he revealed himself to us. When we lose sight of Jesus and we focus on other things, like the strong wind and the big waves, we begin to sink. Doubt, lead, doubt leads to fear. Fear leads to lack of faith. We must keep our eyes on Jesus, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. Focus on him. Focus on the cross. Focus on Jesus. Don't waver. Don't waver because of the circumstances of where you are. If we have a lack of faith, then we need to call upon Jesus. Jesus gives us a second chance to walk in faith. And the implication of Matthew chapter 14 verse 32 is that Peter walked in on water again when he went back to the boat. You remember when Jesus, when Peter was going to Jesus and he started sinking, Jesus told him, you of little faith, and he took him by the hand and they walked together into the boat. They did not carry him, they walked into the boat. We come to the conclusion that faith begins with your realization, with your relationship with God. Within that relationship, God gives personal revelation or words of direction. By faith, we must obey that direction which God will bring to our lives. We can build our faith. In that, we can build our faith through prayer and fasting, Matthew 17, verse 20 and 21. And we can build our faith through hearing and reading the Bible, Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. Our faith can be made stronger when we study, understand, accept and believe in the sovereignty of God and His promises. In that, we must believe that God is able to do it. That is, we take His sovereignty, that God is able and He can do it. Remember what uh, Jeremiah asked the question, that is there anything that is too hard for God to do it. And the angel, when the angels visited um, Abraham, he told him that next year, then like this, I'm going to give you a son. And, uh, and, uh, and Ab Ab uh, Sarah laughed when she was in her house. And the angels asked uh, Abraham, Abraham, is there anything that God cannot do? Why has your wife laughed? So we believe that God is able to do it and we must believe that God wants to do it. It is in his promise. He promised that he can do it. And he wants to do it. He's willing. Who are the people of faith? If you read Hebrews chapter number 11, you will find the people of faith who are mentioned there. Then focus on people and actions of faith. You focus on what they did. They tell you that in those days, Elijah was a man like us. And he prayed. He said that it will not rain. And he came and declared that it's going to rain. There are people of faith who are there. The following is a list of examples of people of faith. In the Old Testament and in the New Testament, you will read it on yourself. Genesis 22, verse 8, Joshua 14, verse 12, and the New Testament, they are great Lord, Acts chapter 27, verse 25, Matthew chapter 8, verse 5, and so forth. Faith. Let's look at faith related to salvation and sanctification. A. God is the source of faith. God gives faith, man receives faith, and therefore, God is the beginning of salvation. If God gives faith to us, and faith leads to salvation, then God is the beginning of salvation. Four aspects of faith. Knowledge is to understand that there is a salvation through Jesus. That is Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Knowledge is a foundation, but it is not sufficient. Therefore, it needs to be more. James chapter 2, verse 19. We need knowledge. We need that understanding. 
but that understanding by itself is not enough. Number two, we need assent. Assent means to say yes to the contents of the gospel and to say yes to your need for the gospel. Remember what we said in the Redemption and Salvation, the AKT, the Act, the knowledge, the assent, the knowledge, and trust. Trust means to trust in God and to depend on God. This includes a debt to yourself and a chance, a change in who you trust in. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, Paul said that I have died in Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but Christ lives in me. So trust means to trust in God and to depend on God. Obedience is the proof of faith. It is the manifestation of true faith. It is the manifestation of true faith. So remember the four aspects of faith. The four aspects of faith. One is knowledge, assent, trust, and obedience. I repeat it and underline it because it may come to the exam. Knowledge, four aspects of faith. Last time we talked of the three aspects of faith, that was the AKT Act, and now we are adding O. So AKT O, Acto, Acto, Ascent, Knowledge, Trust, Obedience. I've given you a linkage to the exam. Let's look at faith and works. Faith has two sides, and the two sides of faith are this. Intellect, the will. Theory, practice. Doctrine, action. Belief, obedience. Belief, repent. Faith, works. Salvation and justification, James chapter 2, verse 14 to 26. Those are the two sides of, of faith and faith and works. Author said, our author wrote here and gave us an illustration that a house is on fire. There is a little girl on the second floor who cannot escape. A big man yells, jump, I will catch you. It is one part of faith that the girl knows that the man is there. It is another part of faith that the girl believes that the man is strong and that he is able to catch her. Nevertheless, the essence of faith is that the girl actually jumps. Faith and works are inseparable. They are like the sun and the light of the sun. Faith is the sun. The works are the rays. True faith produces works. Living faith produces works. The sun produces rays. When there are no more rays, then the sun is dead. James 2, 26. So, faith and works is like the sun and the rays. They go in handy. When you see the sun, there are rays that will come to the earth and we will see that light. So, faith has to be accompanied by works. Jesus told Peter, come. And Peter took that faith they took a step of faith and went where Jesus was and he stepped on the water and he was actually moving until when he looked outside and he, he, he saw the storm and he also reasoned out that a man cannot walk on, on water and he started singing. So a man says, I have faith without works. He is like a man who built the foundation but never builds his house. You've seen people who have built the foundation Lakini katika ile misingi wa mejenga, hawaja jenga nyumba, hawezi hinda kusema ni mejenga nyumba, ati hini nyumba yangu, na ni misingi tuwa meweka. Na -a. a man says, I have works without faith. Kuna mtu wasema nae, niko na matendo, sina imani, lakini niko na matendo. Na kuna watu wengi lewa ambayo wanafanya mambo ya matendo, wanasaidia maskini, wanafanya kazi mzuri, lakini imani yao hawaja ground in Christ. He is like a man who does not build his house upon a good solid place as in Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 and 27 where he talks of the builders who went to build mungina kajenga kwa changarao 
mwingine akaenda akachimba aka mpaka akapata kwa ile foundation sasa wakati upepo ulikuja ule ambao ulikuwa umejengwa juu ya mchanga ulivongwa ukamalizwa the house does not have a good safe foundation when it has not been when there is works and the works haiko katika imani ndio unakuta kuna watu nafikiria kwamba watafanya kazi nzuri na hiyo iwaokoe na ndio maana unakutanga wakati wa mazishi watu wanasema Mungu aweke mahali pema roho yake mahali pema peponi kwa sababu huyu mtu hapo na imani hapo kwa imani watu wanafikiria kwamba wataambia Mungu mahali watamweka imani ni mtu mwenyewe ana ground tunasema it comes from relationship with God the author illustrates here that intellectual knowledge and obedient actions are like the two chemical ingredients in salt salt consists of chemicals called sodium and chloride both sodium and chloride are poisonous sodium will kill a man ukichukua leo sodium hydroxide for example na ukoroge ama uweke kwa mdomo ipate maji unachomeka chloride will kill a man ukichukua hata ile chlorine peke yake itakumaliza lakini wakati zimekuwa combined pamoja when sodium and chloride are combined they produce life and flavor the same is true with faith and works the one without the other is like a poison but together they produce life the climax of faith is union with Christ if you read Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 and 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 you find that true faith is to be in Christ and as we said in our memory verse in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 that never the less I live but Christ lives in me is that Christ in us Christ in us in Christ and Christ in us our faith or the climax of faith is that it has to be in Christ and Christ in us these concepts are spiritual concepts which can be understood only through faith conclusion to our study of faith 10 key principles of faith in our conclusion is that one the christian is saved by faith acts 16 verse 31 and protected by faith first peter chapter 1 verse 5 so our salvation comes through faith number 2 the christian lives by faith galatians 2 verse 20 number 3 faith will be tested many times and in many ways first peter chapter 1 verse 7 we have said that your faith will be tested number 4 faith is patience it knows how to wait on god Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31 When we have faith in God we trust on God and we wait we are patient enough to wait even when God seems to have delayed when God seems not to come quickly to our situation we still be we are still patient we are still waiting that something will happen Five, faith always gains the victory when we wait faith we will eventually gain the victory we will receive it first john first james chapter 5 and verse 4 first john chapter 5 verse 4 attend faith goes against normal things matthew 17 verse 14 to 21 attend it goes beyond normal things remember that woman she came to jesus and she wanted jesus to heal her child and jesus said you cannot take the food which was this food jesus was talking about he was saying that he had come specifically for the Jews not to the Samaritan and the people of the world but when she said that even the crumbs that fell from the table dogs do it Jesus said it is true and may it be done unto you so at times faith goes against normal things faith never quits hebrews 11 verse 32 to 39 faith never quits somebody said that Winners are never quitters and quitters are never winners. So people of faith, men of faith, they never quit. They keep on praying, they keep on uh, they keep on brief, believing and eventually things will come to their advantage. Faith does not make things easy, but it does make things possible. Faith haifanya timamo ikuwe rahisi, lakini inafanya mambo yawezekane. Faith says 
God is completing his perfect will in my life. Therefore, I can wait, I can endure, I can suffer. So a person, a man, a woman of faith will still depend upon God because he knows that God can make it. So he gives himself or herself that, uh, that courage to endure and to continue suffering in the situation that they are in because eventually they know or they believe or they trust that something will happen. God said that when you ask anything, believe that you have received it and surely you have received it. In the introduction, we say that it is difficult to have faith. Nevertheless, remember, with God, nothing is impossible. So we must not allow our past experiences to stop us from living the life of faith. Even if you tried so many things and they never happened, just continue trusting God and things will eventually fall in place. The author finishes this in, in, introduction or this he concludes this course by this illustration that an elephant was tied to a small post. The elephant should have been able to escape with no problem. However, the elephant tried to escape when he was a, a baby, but he was not successful. Therefore, the elephant thought that he could never escape. Do not always, do not allow your past experiences to stop you from living the life of faith. Maybe in the past there is something that you believed in God and it never happened. Maybe you are still a baby. Maybe your faith had not grown. Maybe you are still a child. And now that you have grown, you need to keep on pushing. And if you keep on pushing, eventually you will receive the benefits of faith. Thank you so much for being Bible students on faith. And kindly, this is not all about faith. You are scholars. Scholars never graduate. They keep on studying and, and researching and gaining more and more. But this is just for the purpose of this course. Kindly go through it over again and that will be great to you. God bless you.